Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you clicked on this video, chances are you use the dev tools. I mean, pretty much every web developer does every day. But I bet you're mostly using the same two or three features, console logs, inspecting CSS, and that's fine, but Chrome dev tools can do so much more. So in this video, I'm going to show you 14 dev tools features that will help you work faster, stay in flow, and make your debugging experience a lot smoother. Let's dive in. When you're working on a web design and want to add a shadow to an element, you don't have to tweak every single value manually or open up an external generator. Instead, just inspect the element and find an existing box shadow in the styles panel. To make things clearer, I'll bump up the color first. Then click this little icon to open the CSS shadow editor. And now you can visually adjust the shadow's position, tweak the blur and spread, and even switch to inset shadows. And once it looks good, just copy it out, super smooth. When debugging JavaScript, most of us still throw in console log statements all over the place. But that's not really necessary. In the dev tools in the sources panel, right click next to a line number and choose add log point. Then just type the message you want to log and also variables if needed. And that works just like a regular console log, except you don't have to touch your actual code. Plus, log points persist across page reloads, super handy. And here's a bonus tip. Besides breakpoints and log points, you can also set conditional breakpoints. That way your code only pauses when a specific condition is true. Great for tracking down sneaky bugs and not spamming your console while debugging. One of my absolute favorite features. Go to the three dot menu, more tools, coverage. Or just press command or control, shift and P and type coverage. Pin the tab on top for easy access. Once the coverage tab is open, you can analyze how much of your JavaScript and CSS is actually being used. You can scan per block, which is faster, or per function, which is more detailed. For example, I can see that a huge chunk of this biggest JavaScript file, almost 98%, is completely unused on initial load. And it's not just this one, several other files are only partially used too. And the best part, this updates live as you interact with the page. If I click, for example, on something, you see new numbers. This tool makes it super easy to figure out which parts of your code or third-party libraries could be lazy loaded or maybe even removed entirely. And that way, you can seriously cut down your website size. This next feature might sound a bit nerdy or like an edge case at first, but in some situations it's absolute gold. Let's say you notice that a script is modifying the DOM, adding, removing or changing elements, but you have no idea why it's happening or which script is responsible. For example, if I want to know why the CSS class of this list is changing, I can right-click the node, go to Break On and choose Attribute Modifications. I can also select Subtree Modifications and Node Removal if I want to catch any kind of change to that element. And now you'll see a breakpoint appear in the DOM panel on the left. Then I just need to trigger the action and bam, the debugger halts exactly where the change happens. And I can see that a class is being toggled here, super helpful. Break on is especially useful when you're working with third-party code or frameworks that modify the DOM through lifecycle hooks or side effects and you have no idea what's going on. Flickering issues, weird UI jumps, whatever it is, this feature can help you get to the root of it, really cool. You know the situation. You want to inspect an element like this little menu here to check out the HTML, the CSS or whatever. But the moment you click on something in the DevTools, the menu closes and the element disappears from the DOM. Sure, you could use break on subtree modifications to catch that, but it can get a bit messy. You often have to jump around in the code to figure out what's going on exactly. The better solution is in the rendering tab. There you'll find a checkbox called emulate a focused page. And it does exactly that. The website thinks it's still focused even though you're clicking around in the dev tools. It's a tiny feature, but I use it all the time. And while we're already in the rendering tab, there's a bunch of features in here that help you test how your design behaves under different conditions. There are a ton of options. For example, you can show outlines around layers, highlight areas that might cause scrolling performance issues or preview how your site looks with different preferred color schemes, light mode and also obviously dark mode. And you can also simulate how your website might appear to users with visual impairments. Really helpful if you're aiming to make your site as accessible as possible. 
Next up is another super useful tab, the CSS Overview. You can open it again with Ctrl or Command Shift P and search for CSS Overview. Click Capture Overview for the current website and you'll see some basic stats, how many elements, style sheets, style rules and so on. And keep in mind this here is just a small landing page, on large applications you'll see way more here. So. What's the benefit? If you're working on clean, consistent web design, you usually want to avoid having too many different colors, too many fonts or too many font sizes. This tab gives you a clear overview. Looking at the colors, for example, I notice that one of the gray text colors could probably go. It's almost identical to another. Or I might decide I don't really need a pure black for the background and could just go with this very dark blue instead. The font info is especially helpful. Here I can see that I'm using a whole bunch of different font sizes and line heights and that's something I can clean up to make the layout more consistent and reduce the CSS file size while I'm at it. You can also jump directly to the elements that are using each style, which is super handy. And beyond all that, the CSS overview also points out potential issues like contrast problems where text might be hard to read or unused declarations that you can clean up. Really helpful, practical insights that help you tidy up your CSS code. I take a lot of screenshots every day, for myself, for colleagues, for friends, whatever. But sometimes you just want to capture a specific part of a website as an image. And with Chrome DevTools, that's super easy. Just right click on any node and choose Capture Node Screenshot. That will save an image of exactly that element. Pretty handy, but sure, most screenshot tools can do that too. But here's where it gets more interesting. If you want a screenshot of the entire page and doesn't fit on your screen, so normally you'd have to stitch several screenshots together, you can just right click the body element and hit capture node screenshot. And boom, you'll get a full page image right in your downloads. Another way to achieve that, open the comment palette and type capture full size screenshot. Same result. This one's really small but super helpful. Let's say you want to analyze a console log in an AI tool, for example. Instead of manually expanding all the messages and selecting a bunch of lines, just right click and choose Copy Console. And well, that's exactly what it does. The entire console log goes to your clipboard, ready to paste into your favorite LLM or any other tool of your choice. CSS animations can be a real headache, but Chrome's got your back here too. Under more tools, you'll find the Animations tab. Here, you can take a closer look at CSS animations and view transitions, whether you want to improve your own animations or reverse engineer someone else. As long as the Animations tab is open, it records every animation happening on the page. You can replay them, adjust the speed, scrub through the timeline manually. And of course, jump straight to the animated elements to inspect the code. Try playing around with delays and durations and grab any code you want to tweak or reuse. It really makes working with CSS animations a lot more manageable. In the Network tab of the DevTools, you'll find a few small but powerful features. One of them is the ability to throttle the network connection. This is super useful, especially when you're developing locally, to see how your site behaves when things take a bit longer to load, like whether your loading spinners or fallback states are working properly. But I also use it a lot to check how the app behaves under pressure. For example, what happens if I trigger the same action again while it's still waiting for a server response, or if I do something else in the meantime? Are there any concurrency issues, race conditions? So overall, it often acts like a kind of slow Low motion mode, really helpful in apps that fire off a lot of data requests. You get a chance to follow what's happening more clearly and debug it with your own eyes, step by step. Pretty useful. Quick tip on debugging. If you're in the middle of development and want to pause your code in the browser, you don't always have to set a manual breakpoint in the DevTools. Just add the debugger keyword directly into your JavaScript code and Chrome and also other browsers will automatically stop at that point when the code runs. It's a small trick, but it can save you a bit of time. You probably know that you can run JavaScript in the console, that's pretty standard. But if you have little scripts that you use regularly, you can actually save them as snippets. Just go to the Sources tab, find the Snippets section and create a new one. For example, here I've got one that lists all the links on the current page. Works with a single click. Another one grabs all the text or this one highlights certain layout elements visually. 
And I even made a more advanced snippet once that watches for status changes on the page using a mutation observer and then sends that info to one of my APIs, kind of like a tiny manual screen scraper with an alert system and at that point it's almost like writing your own little Chrome extension, just for yourself. By the way, if you're interested in building a real Chrome extension, I've got a separate video explaining how to do that. Snippets are stored persistently in the browser so they won't disappear. The only downside is to run them you always need to open the dev tools and trigger them manually. They they don't run automatically or anything like that. And here's one last quick tip before we wrap up. If the dev tools are open and you want to clear the cache for a page, just long click the reload button in Chrome. You'll see three options, a normal reload, a hard reload and want to empty the cache and do a hard reload. Super handy and something I use all the time. And that's it for this video, I really hope you found it helpful, let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscription, it helps me a ton to making videos like this. Thank you so much, see you next time.